Hi guys, this is Ahmed. This is our class number three from the chapter two. In this class, we are going to discuss columnar storage and micro partitions. So we know that the data in the snowflake is stored in the form of micro partitions. Micro partitions are arranged in the order it is coming into the database. We have already discussed in the last class the size of the micro partition is it can hold up up to 500 MB of normal data. And one more important point is these micro partitions stores the data in columnar fashion. What is columnar storage? So basically, Snowflake is a columnar database. It stores the data in a column-wise fashion instead of row-wise storage. How ter how Oracle Teradata does it. By default, Snowflake stores data in columnar fashion in micro partitions. There are lot of advantages when we store the data in columnar fashion. So first of all, let's see what is columnar storage. If you look at this diagram, think that I have a table and it has some records. Think that we have some 30 records. So in general, in databases like Oracle and Teradata, in fact, Teradata also stores the data in columnar fashion, but we need to explicitly say this is the columnar table. Then only the data into that particular table gets stored in columnar fashion. Otherwise, it will take the default row fashion. Okay, so think that we have a table like this and the data gets stored in the, like this. This is one record. This is another record. This is third record. Likewise, data gets stored in the normal in the regular databases like Oracle, Netiza, in Teradata. Whereas in case of Snowflake, the data gets stored in this fashion. Suppose this particular table has four columns. In this micro partition, we will be having like four records. The first record is type, the second record is name, the third record is column and fourth record is date. And it takes a handful amount of values from the type column and it will place in this fashion. And the corresponding name values will go and placed into the second row. Okay. In reality, it is like column, our, col our data in the columns are getting stored in the form of row. So this is very much helpful. Think that we have a table with uh, 600 columns. Suppose I want to read only two columns out of those 600 columns. So if the data gets stored in this particular fashion, what happens? I need to read all the fields, okay, first, and then I need to get only the, only the data of those two fields out. See here, there is a lot more read operation, huge amount of data it need to pick up from the database and then filter those two columns data and then that query will be processed in case of row wise storage databases. Whereas in case of columnar, suppose if think that a table is having like 600 columns and I want to read only two columns, then control goes to this the micro partitions and starts reading only those records. Meaning I want to read only name and country. So it will go and read only these two columns these two rows actually okay for as far as uh, it comes to the micro partition our columns are considered as rows so that way whenever you are selecting subset of columns from a huge table okay which has huge columns and the processing will be very much faster in case of column R. generally snowflake stores the data in micro partition in a compressed format since like we are storing like column level data, 
column level data in a row format in each micro partition. Snowflake gets an opportunity to use suitable algorithm to compress to compress uh, numeric values. There will be a separate compression algorithm. If text data, there, there are separate um, compression algorithms based on the distinct values in that particular column. There are separate uh, uh, you know uh, algorithms. So likewise, so that's why Snowflake gets an opportunity. It can use the best suitable, the best algorithm to compress the data. Okay. So here is the example. Suppose if you take the record number two, record number two got stored this way. So four went into the first row and the corresponding value name C went to the second row and the third value SP is gone to third row and the fourth column value here is gone and stored into the row number four in micro partition. So overall, this particular micro partition in this example contains only four records, four rows, because in the table we have only four columns. And now the question is, how should I know how many micro partitions exist? Table. So to find out how many partitions are there for a given table, we need to do the following. Let us do a small exercise to find out how many partitions are there in a given table. Okay, I logged into Snowflake. Now I am taking account admin role. This is the way we can, we can find the metadata of a table. Say select star from Snowflake sample data. This is a database. This is the database. And we know that each database has a data dictionary. Okay, so this particular schema is a data dictionary for this particular database. Okay, so now I am taking that particular schema. Inside that, there is a table called tables. In fact, it is a view. Okay, so this particular view in this uh, data dictionary that is information schema of this particular database and we can say where table name is equal to customer and schema name is equal to this is the schema name. If I run this particular command, it will give me okay, its name is table schema. Okay, so I'm taking this table as an example. The table name is customer and it has 15 million, 150 million records. Okay, let me create a separate table in our sales dimensions schema. Okay, let's create a table in the dimensions schema by taking this particular, by copying this particular table. So I'm creating a table creating a table sales dimensions customer from the sample table that they have given uh, in the sample database. Okay, during this query is executing, let's remember like what we discussed in the last class. So when I fire this particular query, what happens? This query will goes to the cloud service layer and uh, my query will be verified. My user authentication will be done and uh, it will verify whether this table exists. I mean, whether this particular table exists or not. Do I have the rights to create a table in this particular database and in this particular schema and, uh, and it creates a plan and the, then that particular plan will be sent to warehouse. That is, this is called virtual warehouse and this particular virtual warehouse starts creating micro partitions for this particular statement and the metadata about this new table is get stored into the meta store that is our foundation db
Now table got created. Now I want to know how many micro partitions this table occupied. So let's see how many records are there first. So it has 150 million records. So the simple way to see how many partitions are occupied with this particular table is by using the query profiler. So where is the query profiler? So what we'll do, let's say select star from sales dimensions customer, say run and go to history and refresh it. So your last statement will be appear in the first row. Click on this and here are the details about your query and in the profile. In the profile, you will see how your statement is getting executed in a, in a visual fashion. So now you can see total number of partitions are 593. Okay. So since like this query is running, our virtual warehouse is scanning the records from the, from the database. So this, that's why this count is uh, moving up, but uh, totally we can understand these are the total number of partitions occupied by the table sales dimensions and customer, uh, customer table in the dimension schema. So this is how uh, we can get how many number of partitions are occupied by a given table. Yeah, that's all for this class. And in the next class, uh, we will talk about query pruning and some more information about micro partitioning that is called clustering. And there are some useful functions and queries we'll talk about. Yeah, until then, see you, take care.